It's Mailbag Friday on the podcast. We'll be answering all of your Twitter questions for the Atlanta Braves on this Friday Mailbag episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. Hey, this is Stacy Gotsoulias, DC Lundberg, Ryan Finkelstein, Taylor Blake Ward, host of Locked On Yankees, Locked On Mariners, Locked On Mets, Locked On Angels, and you're listening to Locked On Braves. Locked On Braves. Locked On Braves. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, where we talk about your favorite teams every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Check out my bio there to see everywhere. I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves, over at tomahawktake.com. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves, and make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Please make sure you check us out on YouTube as well and hit that subscribe button there. Really do appreciate it. And as always, want to thank you for making Locked On Braves your first listen of each and every day. As a reminder, we post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. But with this being our Friday podcast, this will be our mailbag episode. So we'll be taking all of your questions from Twitter and appreciate all the questions that you sent in. Got some really good ones that we're going to go through on today's podcast. So continue to send in those questions. You can send them in throughout the week and I'll cover them on our Friday mailbag. So appreciate you doing that and continuing to do so. So let's jump right into our questions here. The first one coming from Steve Lamb, a loyal listener of the podcast says, how do you see the catcher's room looking in 2022? He said, assuming there will be a DH, his predictions are that there will be no catchers traded, which is interesting. I want to come back to that. Uh, he says, be Travis Darno and William Contreras in Atlanta with Shea Langeliers and Manny Pena and Gwinnett. And, um, you know, that's an interesting thought for sure. But Manny Pena signed a major league deal and has no minor league options. So there is no way that he will be in Gwinnett. He will be on the Atlanta Braves major league roster the entire season. But it's interesting you say that because this brings up a couple of, of thoughts here. And, you know, obviously when the Braves first signed Manny Pena, it seemed like the writing all was on the wall for William Contreras to be part of a, a trade this offseason. And I still think that's a very good possibility. There's a lot of teams out there that don't have a great situation at the catching position that would probably love to have a William Contreras, a young catcher with control who's cheap and has some upside, especially at the plate. Obviously, he has room to grow defensively. So I think he would be a very valuable trade asset. As I've talked about before on the podcast, though, I would only trade him if he if it's part of a, a big deal because catching depth is hard to find. You know, good young catching is hard to find. I, you know, in other words, I wouldn't trade him for, you know, a bench bat or a reliever or even a, a back line or back of the rotation starter. If I'm trading William Contreras, it, it needs to be for a significant piece in my mind. And, you know, that's not to say that I think William Contreras is, you know, a highly touted prospect or going to be, you know, an all-star level catcher. But like I said, the catching market is very thin. So I think the Braves hold a very valuable asset in somebody who's, you know, ready to make that jump to – you know, become a big league catch, catcher. The Braves just don't have room for him right now, and they don't have the ability to allow him to grow as a major league catcher because they're trying to win. They're trying to win now. Um, so I think Contreras is very valuable in that regard, which is why, you know, I, and I, don't, I wouldn't even say he'd be a centerpiece, but, you know, if you had a big deal for, you know, uh, Ramon Lariano from Oakland or even, you know, an Abira Buxton deal, you know, I think, Contreras could be part of that package. It you know would probably have to include somebody else in that as well, like a Pache or a Waters. But I think Contreras was – I think he could be a sweetener. That's probably the best way to put it. I think Contreras could be a good sweetener in a package for, you know, a, a big move for an outfielder or a pitcher or something in that regard. So, again, I would, I would not be surprised if he's traded, but 
I also don't mind having him around because, like you said, you know, catching depth is is hard to come by, and Travis Darno is often injured. We saw what happened last year. Um, so I don't mind having Contreras around. And Steve mentions the DH. I mean, that's another possibility of getting another bat in there. If you wanted to keep Contreras, you know, on the major league roster, I think there's better options out there for DH, which we're actually going to talk about a little bit later. But, you know, if you wanted to continue to get Contreras at bats and, you know, Langelius is going to be getting the majority of the work at catcher and AAA already, although, you know, obviously there's a DH there and Contreras can still get at bats that way. Um, but you know, there, there could be more opportunities for him to get at bats at the major league level with the DH coming. So, you know, some interesting thoughts there, but yeah, it's going to be Darno and Manny Pena at the big league level until one of them gets hurt. And then Contreras would probably be the first one called up if he has not traded this off season. So good question there from Steve Lamb. Next question here comes from Caleb Cabo, uh, proud dad. Caleb, uh, hopefully I'm saying that last name right, but Caleb asks, are there any realistic trade targets you could see moving a starting pitcher from this year for? So uh, kind of a, I'm not really sure I completely understood the question here, but it sounds like Caleb is wondering if there are any trade targets out there that the Braves would move any of the, the current starting pitchers that the Braves have for and I'm guessing these are pitchers not named Charlie Morton or Max Freed or maybe even Ian Anderson. I, I don't know. I'm trying to read a little bit between the lines here. Um, I I mentioned those three because those three are are untouchable for me. I mean, those three pretty much just carried you to a World Series. And, uh, you know, for all the talk of the Braves offense and the home runs they had, and that was great, the Braves pitching is what won them the World Series. They held down two of the best offenses and all of baseball so that's what won them a world series i would not trade from that at all i would not trade charlie morton max reed or ian anderson i would not do anything with throws three now the rest of them yeah if there was a move to be made if there was you know a, a bat to be had and you know, I already mentioned loriano from oakland or buxton with the twins to fill that center field spot you know if there's a move like that to be had you know can tell Marte, arizona you know, I would move pretty much any of the other young Braves starters in a deal like that, you know, and that includes, you know, Kyle Wright, you know, Kyle Muller, Tucker Davidson, um, you know, though that group of starting pitchers behind those big three, but then that also, you know, creates a void in the back of the rotation. So, you know, I don't, I don't see the Braves trading or really wanting to trade from their depth of, of young starting pitching. I think that's what, again, won them a World Series. So I would be hesitant to move some of that, especially, you know, the top three. Like I said, I don't think those guys go anywhere. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens with with Mike Soroka, you know, because, uh, you know, guy hasn't pitched in, in two years. You know, you wonder what the value is there if a team – you know, wanted to play on the the upside of him, you know, being healthy and getting back to a top of the rotation pitcher, which obviously the Braves hope happened with them. But if the Braves, you know, feel there's a mood to be made and a team's willing to trade for that high upside of Mike Soroka and, you know, hoping that he comes back from a second Achilles tear, you know, just as good as he was before, then maybe they do something like that. I don't, I'm not saying that would happen or that should happen, but, you know, just trying to, Again, read between the lines of the question a little bit here. I think uh, Caleb's asking about pitching that that the Braves would trade in a bigger deal. And for me, to answer the question straightly, you know, anything outside of Morton Freed and Anderson is, is available to be dealt in any type of deal for a big upgrade somewhere else. Again, kind of like what I talked about with Contreras, it'd have to be in a in a big move. Otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't really move any of these guys because having depth of pitching is just as just importing is having depth at the catcher position as well. So I would be hesitant to move any depth as far as the starting pitching is concerned, unless it is in a big move like some of the ones that we talked about. But good question there from Caleb as well. Appreciate you sending that in. All right, take a couple of questions about the DH position next. But before we do that, I want to remind you about Thanksgiving coming up, all the good food and treats and plenty of them. 
but maybe you want a yummy dessert that isn't full of calories and sugar. It's the perfect time for Built Bars. Built Bar is the new holiday dessert. Feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars are only 130 calories and only 4 grams of sugar with plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with chocolate with coconut Built Bar uh, wrapped in 100% real chocolate. Or go for a raspberry Built Bar instead of that raspberry pie. Lots of good flavors to replace any pie. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, and high protein. Built Bar is a great option for when you're hungry. And if Thanksgiving isn't coming soon enough, which it is coming up next week, go for a Built Bar or two. Share some at your family gatherings. New surprises all month long at Built.com. Limited time flavors arriving on the daily. So make sure you're checking Built.com often. There's nothing like a Built Bar Black Friday. So mark your calendars. Black Friday will be a huge event with lots of surprises. Go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, so got a couple of questions here. Uh, both of them kind of having to do with the DH, but I'll answer them separately. Uh, Nate McCullough says, is Kyle Schwarber a DH target? Um, so first of all, you know, we have to talk about the fact that most people tend to believe the DH will come into play starting in 2022 once these Collective bargaining agreement is is concluded, and you know I haven't really touched about that on the podcast yet because I don't want to bring the mood down. Um, but we are likely headed for a lockout here in a little bit over a week. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't lead to games lost. But part of that collective bargaining agreement will likely include a full time DH in both leagues. That is what most people are expecting. So the Braves will obviously be on the hunt for a DH next season. And Kyle Schwarber is a very good target. I would actually love Kyle Schwarber. You know, not only is he a very good left-handed power bat, which I've talked about before, the Braves, you know, need more from the left side. That's mainly why Eddie, Ros Eddie Rosario is one of the outfield targets that I would be going after the most. Uh, but Kyle Schwarber, Schwarber brings that as well. Not only that, he just seems like a great clubhouse guy. Uh, you know, he's been on some some winning teams as well part of that World Series team with the Cubs. So I, I like Kyle Schwarber. I think that would be a very good target. I don't know exactly what his price would be. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see with all these, you know, DH types as far as what their, what their market's going to look like with a full-time DH in both leagues now. I mean, I think we could see an uptick in price for those guys because there's going to be, you know, 15 other teams that need a, a DH now. So, uh, it'd be interesting to see how the market plays out there and what those guys go for. Um, but yeah, Kyle Schwarber is somebody I would definitely be looking to if I'm the Braves. Um, I think he brings a lot of what you need. Um, could fill in at first base if if needed. A little bit sketchy over there, but the Red Sox had him there, you know, in the postseason, so he can do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's primarily going to be a DH. He's a 30 home run type bat again from the left side. Uh, can stick in the you know four five hole in your order. You know if you did that, um, you know you could go, you could go Acuna, Freeman, Riley, and Schwarber. That's a pretty nice top four there. Uh, certainly would be okay with that. But uh, yeah, I mean I'd go for Schwarber depending on what the price tag is for him. I think he would be a great fit as the Braves at DH. And then kind of along with that, a uh, similar question from. Hunter Rose, uh, Sox sports fan uh, on Twitter says, do you bring back Solaire if you don't have the universal DH? So uh, this one's, you know, a little bit broader question as far as, you know, bringing back Jorge Solaire. You know, I think the first part of this is, you know, do you, do you only bring back Jorge Solaire if there's a DH? I think that's the first question we need to answer here. And my, my immediate answer to that is, no, you know, I don't, the Braves had played plenty of games with him in the outfield, and I don't think he was a huge detriment to you out there. So I would not only bring him back if there is a DH. If the DH, you know, doesn't come into play, if that doesn't get approved, um, which I'd be okay with, I, I'm I'm still not completely on board with the DH, but uh, that's a separate podcast. But 
if for some reason the DH doesn't get approved and we don't have it in 2022 and going forward, I still would pursue Jorge Soler. I still think the bat is very va- valuable uh, in the lineup if we get the Soler that you know the Braves got after they traded for him. Um, and you know he's probably somewhere in between what he did with the Royals and what he did with the Braves, which is still you know a really solid player. I didn't think the defense was too bad in right field. I think you could live with that. Um, so I would, you know, I would to answer the question straight up. You know, I would not, I would not only sign Solaire if there, if there is a DH. Now, if there is a DH, then for me it's a it's a no brainer. Uh, I think you go after Solaire. I think he and Schorber would both be two very good targets for the DH position. But I, you know, I think I mentioned it on the podcast before. I think what what Solaire did. You know, in the second half with the Braves, what he did in the postseason, he's probably going to price himself out of the Braves' range here uh, with just how great he's been. You know, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword here because you know, it was so great for the Braves, which is awesome, but he also was so good that the Braves probably won't be able to afford to bring him back. But I would love to have Solaire back, you know, whether there's a DH or not. Uh, it does make it a little bit questionable if there if there isn't a DH. I'll say this because I've been saying all along that I prioritize Eddie Rosario over Solaire. You know, my list of the the outfielders that uh, the Braves had that are now free agents. You know, it's been Rosario, Solaire, and then Jock Peterson is the order of how I would want to retain them the most or who I would want to retain the most. If there is a DH, Solaire maybe jumps Rosario. Um, but I probably still would want Rosario, uh, even in that scenario, just because of the left-handedness. Um, I don't, you know, I, 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 I'm still thinking about it. It's such a tough decision. You know, I keep going back and forth on it in my mind, even as we're speaking here, because Rosario wasn't exactly great in the outfield himself. You know, he made a couple of good plays there in the World Series. You know, one catch, I still, I, I don't think he knows how he caught the ball. Um, you know, and then he had the, the play off the wall to throw the runner out at, at second, but he also is just uh, a bit scary out there at, at times. So, you know, it's not like he was great defensively either, but I do like the left-handed bat uh, that Rosario has, you know, and I think Braves just need more of that from the left side in their lineup, somebody else other than Freddie Freeman. Um, so I'd probably still have Rosario over Solaire, but, you know, I would love to have both of those guys back. If there is a DH, I would love to have Rosario uh, and Solaire back, if at all possible. I think both of those would be great. But yeah, good question there uh, from Hunter on Solaire. You know, DH or no DH, do you still want him, uh, want the Braves to bring him back? Bet Online is back and better than ever. A new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to receive your bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So our last question here comes from Cade Harrington. He said, if something big comes to the table, do you move Pache, Waters, or Harris? And I assume we're talking about Michael Harris here. Um, And it depends on what the definition of of big is here. Um, I think I'd move Pache and Waters pretty much in in a heartbeat for a deal for Ramon Laureano or Byron Buxton. Um, I, I would move either of those in, the, in a heartbeat. I've already, I've already said on the podcast, I'm not a huge Drew Waters fan. I think he does probably have more upside than Pache. Um, I, and I, I like Pache. I want to see him get the center field job to start 22 and, and get a good run at it. Like I said, it's just hard for teams that are trying to compete right now. You know, that was the big thing with the Braves in 2021. He struggled out of the gate, got injured. The Braves as a team were struggling so you couldn't really bring Pache up when the team was already struggling and, and he was struggling. You couldn't really give him time to figure it out. You know, hopefully he comes into 2022 healthy and, you know, gets a full run at it in center field and we can really see what he can do. Um, but that being said, you know, if the Braves have a big deal on the table 
for a center field center fielder or some big outfield bat that has years of control, I would give up Pache or Waters, you know, in, in a heartbeat and not not bat, bat an eye at it. Um, Michael Harris is a little bit different because um, I think Michael Harris is probably the best prospect in the Braves system right now, has the most upside, has the ability to be a, a five-tool player. He is almost untouchable for me at this point. Um, now, I, and I've talked about it before with this, I think next year is going to be a big, big development for Michael Harris. He played pretty much all of 2021 at high A. The biggest jump for prospects is high A to double A, and double A South is really hard uh, to hit in. So next year is going to be a huge development of year for, for Michael Harris, and we'll see you know what type of prospect he is, what he's what he could become. You know, if he goes to double A and tears it up there and you know hits 280, you know, 340 on base, and we see the, the power numbers go up a little bit as well, even if he, you know, just gets to 15 home runs, then I think you got something special here and you got to hold on to that. If he goes up there and struggles, then I think, you know, we've had to pull the reins back a little bit, but we're not going to know that until he gets to that level. Cause again, that's the determining level for me of when somebody becomes a true legit prospect and you can kind of dream on what they can do at the major league level right now, you know, at the, at the lower levels, you know, he looks great. He looks fantastic. He looks like the five tool player uh, that a lot of people are raving about that he could be. But for me, I'm not really going to be fully believing in that until he gets a double A. And that's where you have to trust, you know, the, the brave scouts and talent evaluators to know, you know, do they feel confident that he's going to be that guy or is he going to struggle at, at the higher levels? And if they feel like he is, then I think you have to have those discussions internally and be okay to trade him. Um, but if they, they don't and they feel like he's going to be, you know, potentially that five tool superstar player, then, then he's untouchable. Um, and only really the brave scouts and the people in the know can determine that. Um, but I would hold on to him. I would not trade Michael Harris right now. It, it would have to be, it would have to be for a, you know, all-star level player for me to trade Michael Harris and not just that an all-star level player that has years of control for me to trade somebody like Michael Harris. But, you know, we, I have a better understanding of what to expect from Pache and Waters at this point. Um, so I would be a little bit, you know, I'd be more okay with trading one of them in a big deal, you know, for an outfielder, for a, a starting pitcher, um, you know, if, if if that big deal came on the table. So um, so to answer your question, Cade, I, I would be, I would move Pache or Waters in a big deal. I'd be very hesitant to move Michael Harris right now. And less, like it said, it's for an all-star level player that has years of control. And I just don't know if that deal is out there to be made or not. And Alex, as we've seen in the past, he doesn't make a lot of big trades like this. He still hasn't made a big trade like this and still won a World Series. So, you know, in Alex, we trust. But I just don't see him doing that type of deal for a Michael Harris. Uh, again, I think I can see him moving waters, especially. It seems like maybe the... Um, this is something that made the Braves have soured on him a little bit as a prospect, but uh, I want to see Pache get that center field job for 2022. Hopefully he, he gets that opportunity, but unless the right deal comes along, um, you know, I, I wouldn't move any of these guys unless, you know, the right deal comes along at somebody who has control, um, but probably would not move Michael Harris. I'd be more okay moving Pache or Waters in the right deal. But appreciate the question there from Cade. And then finally, one thing I just wanted to mention before we get out of here, you had the MVP voting on Thursday night. Austin Riley finished seventh in the voting. Thought that was a little low. Probably should have been top five. Freddie Freeman finished ninth. Ozzy Albies, 13th. I, I just wanted to, to quickly explain why Riley uh, was so low. I mean, it's partly because he's splitting votes between Freddie and Ozzy. And if you're not a... Braves fan and you weren't watching every day and really in tune with what was happening in the Braves season, then you don't understand how valuable Austin Riley really was to the team. I mean, he pretty much had to pick up the slack for Ozuna and Acuna and become that middle of the order bat that they needed. And that's what he that he did. And he pretty much, you know, carried the team along with Freddie and, and Ozzy and others. But if it's just a voter who's sitting back looking at the stats, then yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious Riley wasn't you know, one of the best offensive players in the league in 2021, especially if you look at Riley, Riley stats right, right next to Freddie Freeman's, they're pretty much identical. So, you know, it's hard to choose one guy over the other when they got pretty much the same exact stats. 
and they're gonna they're gonna split votes. You know, all three of them had very good numbers, but unless you were actually watching the Braves every day, like I know a lot of you were, you don't understand the value that Austin Riley had and picking up this team, you know, when they were down, when they needed a lift offensively. So for Braves fans, they know, you know, how valuable that, you know, Riley was the MVP for the Braves this season, but just voters around the the league who can't watch the Braves every day and don't understand what they were going through, aren't going to understand that. So it makes sense uh, in that regard, why Riley wasn't voted higher, but still pretty cool to have, you know, three guys in the top 13 of the MVP voting uh, pretty awesome there for the Braves. That will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. We will talk to you next time.